acute diseases or accidents or disasters, doctors immediately take helicopter to the emergency site to provide emergency medical care. Doctor helicopter significantly contribute to the improvement of the life saving rate and the reduction of after effects by uh, enabling doctors well versed in emergency medical care to immediately perform emergency medical care at, at the emergency site and reducing the transportation time, uh, especially in remote areas. So uh, I'd like to touch upon the budget. Um, half of the expense is uh, funded by national government, uh, and another half is uh, from prefectural government. So Dr. Helicopter is implemented by prefectural government. So I'd like to move to disaster medical system. This is a basic structure of uh, disaster medical system. Left side is a devastated area. Uh, the core role is uh, taken by disaster-based hospital, designated by prefectural government. And so this is a site of the disaster. So ambulance uh, transport the patient to on-site hospital, and on-site hospital do triage treatment, and if needed. Uh, transportation to disaster based hospital. This is the basic structure. But in case of huge disaster, uh, the number of patients uh, exceed the capacity of regional medical, uh, medical care. So in that case, the devastated area requests the uh, non-devastated area to dispatch the DMAT. DMAT is a uh, disaster medical assistance team uh, from the uh, disaster-based hospital in other region. And uh, DMAT is coming to the uh, devastated area and support them to provide a medical emergency medical care. And uh, wide area transportation is also taken. So we have uh, all about uh, 700 disaster-based hospitals. Among them, 61 is a core disaster hospital. This is a requirement for disaster-based hospitals. Um, they have to respond within 24 hours in emergency and access and the transporting the people from disaster area. They should they should have, uh, they have to have a report on the hospital premises. And uh, they have a responsibility to dispatch a medical team to disaster area. And uh, to have sufficient room and a folding bed to respond and accommodate emergency patients. Um, and um, they should prepare the supply lifelines such as water and electric power, uh, store food and drinking water is also required. So now I'd like to explain the DMAT system. Basic, uh, basic concept of Japan DMAT, uh, as you are aware, living rate is gradually going down as time is going. After 40 hours, the life-saving rate becomes desperate. But traditional medical team from Red Cross hospitals and the medical association uh, take time to reach the devastated area. So we have to address the uh, urgent needs for emergency care. So Japan uh, started a DMAT system. Once disaster occur, DMAT of other area 
immediately dispatched to the devastated area to address the um, urgent needs of emergency medical care. So main roles of DMAT is like this. Uh, give medical support to disaster-based hospital and the three T's, triage, treatment, transport in devastated areas, including wide, wide area medical air transportation and give medical support to staging care unit. Staging care unit is a uh, tentative medical facility in the airport, uh, which is established in case of disaster. We have about 1,500 uh, 1, teams. Each team has four personnel, including uh, one physician and two nurses and uh, one logistician. So they have they are, the deployment is maximum within 40 hours, 48 hours. So this is a finance of, of the demand activities. So in case of disaster, devastated prefecture requests the DMAT deployment to prefectural government in other area. The prefecture government requests the hospital to dispatch the DMAT to the devastated area. After that, uh, devastated prefectural government pay expense to the uh, dispatching prefectural government. And then, prefectural government pay expense to the hospital. Mr. Sensho, uh, yes. if I may, uh, can we be a bit brief so that uh, we can wrap in the future, oh, please? please? Thank you. Thank you. So, so the prefectural government in the devastated area uh, can easily collect all the information of medical needs uh, through IT system called EMIS. Uh, just after occurrence, uh, hospitals in devastated area input the hospital damage information and the uh, number of hospitals patient in the hospital. After some time, detailed information are also uh, inputted. This is a screen at the prefecture government. So automatically, uh, all the information are automatically formulated in a one page. So prefecture government shall easily uh, catch the total needs of the medical care. And once devastated affected the prefecture office turned on disaster mode in this IT system. So this information will be shared with all the stakeholders, uh, including the national level Ministry of Health and the prefecture office, DMAT hospital, and the member of DMAT hospital, member of DMAT. <coughs> so we experienced the uh, largest earthquake uh, recently expressed, expre uh, experienced in 2011. So this is a casualty, uh, about uh, 15,000 deaths and uh, 3,500 missing and uh, up to 6,000 injured. It was the biggest uh, disaster in Japan. The so Ministry of Health uh, sent uh, Ministry of Health uh, directly sent uh, medical materials like uh, drugs and uh, blanket, etc. Uh, and they also coordinate the material uh, given by other organizations, NGOs or overseas organizations, and uh, foreign government, etc. And um, Medical, medical personnel are also, many kind of medical team are also dispatched to the affected areas. Uh, right after the disaster, as I mentioned, the DMAT, many DMAT are dispatched to the uh, area of earthquake. So after that, uh, traditional medical team are also dispatched and uh, uh, mental 
psychological care team, and the nurses, and the public health nurses, and the pharmacists, and the dietitians are uh, also dispatched. This is a summary of Japan uh, DMAT activities. Total, in total, uh, 383 teams, uh, 1,852 personnel were dispatched to the affected area uh, from, uh, from all parts of Japan, from rest of part of Japan. Active period of, is uh, 11 March to uh, 22nd. Uh, the activity is for 20 days, uh, sorry, 12 days. So this is a photo of the activity of GMAT and the, and the occasion of uh, Great East Japan earthquake. So top of red area, the bottom of yellow area. So this is a tentative uh, medical care facilities uh, established in the airport in affected areas. This is a jet plane. Uh, that transportation from the affected area to Tokyo. This is the DMAT supervisor's office uh, allocated in each of the prefectural government's office in uh, devastated areas. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sancho. Um, our next speaker comes from Myanmar. Um, in the interest of time, can I remind all the speakers to please stick to your allocated time of, of 12 minutes. Um, Professor Ong is an orthopedic surgeon from the Yangon General Hospital and he's going to uh, give a presentation on the state of trauma in Myanmar. So, good morning, everybody. I would like to present about the situation of the Myanmar and what we are doing and what we need. You can advise us for the development of the trauma care in the Myanmar. So, as you all know, we are living in the ASEAN country and the area is about the 261,000 square miles. And then the total population of the 33 million and urban population is about 33%. So obesity is 8.4 percent and under between the 24.9 percent. And then the, our life expectancy is 64 for May and 68 for the May, the May. And total expenditure is 1.8 percent of the GDP. So the urban income classification is low for the Myanmar. So in our country, we also take care of the patient for the trauma patient. In three aspects, we do the preventive aspects and the pre-hospital care and hospital management. There's a rising trend of the trauma in Myanmar from the 2010 to 2013. A lot of cases rising from the trauma and also the traffic injuries mostly increasing in our country. In our country, the single leading cause of mobility about the 2012 data, there is a about 10% for the injuries of the specified and specified in the middle well body regions and also the fracture of the limbs of the 1.5% and total of the 11.5% is the highest in the 2012 in Myanmar. And also the single leading cause of mortality is the other injuries of the specified and specified in multiple body regions of 5.4% and intracranial injuries are about the 2.7%. The total injury mortality 8.1% the highest in the 2012 in Myanmar. So as said in other countries where the most cause of the injury is the road traffic accidents and 10 RTA cases all over the country every day and 300 RTA tests every month. The most of the cases of the road traffic accidents are two wheeler riders in Myanmar and the pace of injury is most of occur in the streets and highways. As you all know there is a highway step is increase in Myanmar. The road traffic accidents that we published in May 2014, there's a road traffic accident that's in Myanmar reached the 
7,281 or 1.83% of the total deaths. Age adjusted rate is about 41 by 6 per 100,000 population. There's a, therefore, there's a Myanmar rank as a 97 in the world. Her accident kills 11 life by day on the average in Myanmar. And depth of estim estimated 4,000 people a year according to the February and Commerce Privacy Committee in Myanmar. So there we have the road, national road safety team registered vehicle is about 4.2 million in 2013-2014, always motorcycle is at 3.6 million. So there is a lot of road traffic accident in Myanmar. Between March 2009 and April 2013, according to data from the highway police, 432 accidents, 216 deaths, and 678 injuries. So national road safety team formed since March mid 2014 to advocate the traffic rule among the public's representatives from the various government departments for the preventive aspect. We also have the injury prevention projects. Since 1992, Myanmar's Ministry of Health and Wage provides cooperation with the, for the injury prevention project, which is going ongoing across the country to reduce the deaths and injury resulting from the traffic related and what related accidents. We have also the pre hospital there. The Evangi study in 2015, 2007, 2009, 18% of the injured patients did not receive any first aid management at the scene of trauma. So the pre hospital care is a very Poor in our country, 11% receive the first aid care in the DIY clinics or hospital. So we have to develop our pre-hospital care management. In the graph, you can see the 3.3 to 5% of the injured patients are transported to the hospital by an ambulance. Some improvement after the 2010, about 10 to 40% by an ambulance. By this awareness, the need of the EMS increase and develop charity ambulance transport services, but still not for EMS, but for the transport only in our country. The government hospital bought a lot of ambulance with the stamp ambulance, but in the public, there is a government hospital, private hospital, NGOs, and police fire and fire department, social organization, and private also develop the ambulance system in Myanmar. But the level of ambulance is only for the transport, not the proper ambulance system. Then some disaster and some Major disaster case, mass casualty case, the fire brigade also the aid for the ambulance system. And we also have the for the prevention, we have the primary trauma care and the pre hospital care. They started March 2009 after the cyclone night. At that time, we had a lot of suffering for our people. So we developed the primary trauma care system and training at the MME, Myanmar Medical Association, 47 training courses, two days and four day courses training as a universal medicine and instructors of about 300 and we have also a special interest group of the primary trauma care in the Myanmar. The, as you all know, the PDC mission statement is that to train the doctors as nurses to treat severely injured patients quickly and systematically. So we have to train the doctors, not only in the public, but also for the other outside doctors and nurses to take care of the trauma patient. And we have also the Myanmar Medical Association launched the ambulance system. In that system, there is a medical officer that voluntarily takes part in the care of the patient during the transportation and taking care of the trauma care. For the hospital care, we have the major hospital in Yangon and Mandalay and Nepido. The Yangon is uh, our working in this hospital is about 1,500 better hospitals. And then Mandalay General Hospital, also the 1,000 federal hospital, treat over more than 1,000 patients per day. And then now we are working in the Jango General Hospital. That we developed the emergency department this year. The trauma care is a teamwork. So the team is the emergency department of the Jango General Hospital, the emergency medicine team triage team, resuscitation team, priority treatment team, administrative team, and surgical team include the orthopedic surgeon, emergency operation theater team, ICU, radiology, and laboratory teams. The facilities of the, our ED department is the for our service for seven days a week, emergency medicine specialists available, equipment for the ATLS approach, portable X-ray and ultrasound and first scan, equipment for the procedure, with the splendage, dressing, stitching, and POB room, from observation unit and emergency imaging unit like CTs and X-ray and ultrasound, and then 24-hour laboratory 
and we are also the stem and surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, neurosurgeon, on call at the emergency department. We are working together as a team. That's a trauma team in the Yangon General Hospital. We are taking care of the patient at the emergency department. There's an EM personnel taking care of the arrival, then they triage the patient and they resuscitate the patient. Before the era of the emergency medicine, we had the emergency receiving center one and two taking care of the patient separately for the medical emergency and surgical emergency. Now we are, after opening of the department of the emergency medicine in Myanmar, the emergency medical officer, ED personnel, orthopedic surgeon, and house officer, postgraduate students are working together for the triage and resuscitation in the emergency department. And then after the stabilization of the patient, the patient was sent to the medical observation, surgical observation, and orthopedic and trauma cases. And if we need, we have to do the emergency operation in the UTH, emergency operation theater. And if we need, we send to the ICU. And after the patient is stabilized, we send to the ward. In this situation, we have the no integrated trauma ward. So we take care of the patient in separate wards. So there is some problem with the integrated trauma care in the hospital. There is a current improvement in hospital and emergency trauma care. So that we, need, we need a facility development, faculty development, system development, and training ground development for our development in the emergency care. There is a triage area, the emergency medicine physician taking care of the patient and assessing the patient. And then we can do the resuscitation and the patient center approach. We did the, all the minor and resuscitation procedure. There is a mandate general hospital. That it is a main major center for the upper Nema. And then after the monitor of the patient before the admission, we stabilize the patient. After the patient is stabilized, transfer to the specific ward. And sometimes there's a mass casualty in the emergency department. Most of the cases are in the door where there is a road traffic accident at the highway road. Now we have the training of the, our medical officer and nurses at the on-job training and on-table training. There's a STEM, Yamaha yeah, Amenities Life Support, ELS courses, and training of the our junior person PTC courses. And there's a training of the, our junior person for the ambulance and taking care of the patient before transferring to the hospital. So upgrading trauma care, the international cooperation and support for me. The Alfred Trauma Center from Australia, via Australian College of the Surgeon, to be to the Injury Prevention Project, and Cambridge Trauma Center, taking care of our improvement. There's also the government support for the, our health. There's a budget for the 1% to the 3% now, going increase up to 8% during the next 10 years. The 60% for the health services, 20% for the public health, and 4% for the medical education, and 20% for the administrative purpose. So we have to develop our care. In global ratio in Myanmar, there's an orthopedic surgeon, so one orthopedic surgeon taking care of the 250 in patient in our country, so there's um, less human resources. So there's uh, also the human resources manpower. In 2013-14, the total number of doctors is uh, 31,542. And there's also the 39,532 in Myanmar. There's a hospital is uh, 1,056 and 988 hospital in health facility. And the government expenditure for the health resources is uh, 143,203. And there's a training center for the NEMA. There's University of Medicine 1 in Yangon, University of Medicine 2 in Yangon, University of Mendeley, University of McQueen, and University of Public Health. So we can train the medical officers for the trauma care in their curriculum. So there's also the training for the Nazi, for the University of Nazi in Django and Mandalay, and also the medical technology in Mandalay. So national health plan for the 2011-2016 developed around the following 11 programs. In this program, the second program, planning, controlling, and care of the non-community disease and condition, we can take part in the trauma care of the patient and developing our emergency service, improving hospital care, so we can improve our hospital management of the trauma cases and human resources for health, we can improve our training of the human resources and promoting the health research for the, our lagging the data for the trauma care and our outcome. And strengthening the health system, we can take part in the trauma cases and expanding the health care covering the rural, very urban and border area.
so we can start the primary health care center to the touch the health center we can improve our trauma care according to this program so there's a, a lot of step for our development of the program from the ministry of health down to the village volunteers so myanmar has a vision 2030 objective for human resource development to train and produce all the categories the human resource about the health within the country the nursing for the protection by year or the 450 nursing for the myanmar and trainers for the 1250 nurses a human resource in the ministry of health there is a nursing center in the yangon and mandalay you can train the nursing for the trauma care and we can put the curriculum for the trauma care of the patient in the nursing there is a new program in the diploma in emergency nursing pg diploma for 15 month courses now studying in the myanmar for the care of the trauma cases and master of nursing science program for critical nursing and master of nursing for the orthopedic nursing we can for the trauma care curriculum in this curriculum of the training courses so protection of nurses and nursing in yangon is a diploma in the 2461 there is a nine month specialty diploma courses for the orthopedic and specialty courses so there is a lot of training center in the myanmar at the district level so you can put in the trauma care of the patient at the lowest level training in the their nurses trainer dr ong can you wrap it up yeah. in one minute yeah time? yeah so we have to establish the training center for the this is a management also the 2030 we put there in the bureau and so there is a, it's also the myma emergency medicine development program is at the cyclone nagis where the participants of the en personnel developing the emergency medicine in myma there's a three phase we develop and after the three phase primary trauma care so appropriate short course include the primary trauma care ems ets ells apls and other training courses so there is a last disaster in myanmar in july in 2015 heavy monsoons and cyclone so declare for the state and region of the country that has the zone so upgrading the trauma care in the for our plans trauma gene development in vita hospital implementation of trauma registry upgrading the ed in state and division level of hospital bar find a better hospital development of the trauma surgeon as specialty upgrading the icu and development of icu specialists development of ems ambulance services and upgrade the township level trauma care through the professional training and community in our country so thank you for your attention Thank you very much, uh, Professor Wen, for giving us uh, the, the scenario in, in Myanmar over there. Thank you again. Uh, now I welcome Dr. Kanjana Chanthai, who is Director of the Bureau of Nursing in the Ministry of Public Health in Thailand. Dr. Chanthai, please. the trauma care and nursing in Thailand then we look at the Thailand is a uh, uh, have uh, five and uh, 514000 uh, square kilometer is a uh, lie in the middle of the main line south east asia and why trauma is in concern we look at this uh, the statistic of the bureau of health and that strategy this year of public health we have uh, added asken is the uh, second uh, of uh, causes of death and so what are the causes of the trauma in thailand the severe injury cases of uh, five important causes is uh, transport accident mechanical fall assault intense self harm and drop the trauma the transport accident 
and the causes of the transportation accident like this and mechanical force and work accident and crime and youth violence like a car bomb also the intention self harm like this and drawing child drawing and this is a in Thailand the disaster the tsunami in uh, and landslide the fall and the earthquake like this what is Thailand concern for the trauma uh, we look at uh, in the former time we also have uh, the uh, EMS start from uh, protecting foundation is a private hospital but uh, when we confirm to as uh, with the trauma center at Konkan uh, hospital and uh, in, in 2008 we established the National Institute for Emergency Medicine is a, a national in institute and after that in 2008 uh, we have the medical emergency call 1669 and as a bit uh, the trauma center in every district every province and in big city and every regional the trauma center in thailand the trauma center is a uh, we have uh, in after the ministry of public health we have uh, the qualified to the trauma center in every area